This is Lady Maya. I am here with my homegirl, Amy Hutton. Okay, so she is, she works with the youth, okay, because you know the children are our future. So we are definitely going to have her lead the way. <laughs> lead the way. Certainly. I appreciate her just being on the show. Thank you so much for living your best life with Lady Maya, you guys. And we appreciate all your your energies and just everything that you do. Now, Maya and Tri, please welcome Miss Amy. Hello, thank you for having me here tonight. Well, thank you for being here with us, dearest, dearest. I got questions. Got yes, questions. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, a youth diversity advisor. That's a that's a mouthful. So, please explain. For sure. So, youth diversity advisor is what I call myself because. I'm advising educators on how to facilitate safe spaces in their schools for young female students. My mission, like why I do what I do, is that girls need and deserve a safe space at school to be themselves and to get support. Because, you know, when I was growing up in elementary school between grades three and grade eight, school wasn't a safe space for me at all. I was severely teased and bullied and called names like stupid, ugly, dumb, retarded, and a loser every day. And the teachers didn't step in. The teachers didn't do anything to help. Now, granted, I realize this is a different time period. This was, you know, mid 80s to early 90s. Yet still, I think, feel that someone should have stepped in and, and hey, like what's going on? And it got worse even in grade seven when I was actually physically assaulted in the girls' locker room by a group of girls in grade eight. I was grabbed by bra strap from behind and flung around the room until I went flying into the locker. And, you know, battered and bruised and red in the face, I couldn't do anything. So when the teacher did come in finally and looked at me and looked at the girls, she just didn't really know what to do or what to say. And I couldn't say anything because I was afraid of it happening again and mm -hmm. getting hurt again or getting more hurt mm -hmm. and i thought the bullying was over when i got into grade nine in high school and from my peers it was i went from a school of a graduating class of we'll say 45 students total to a high school with 2000 students so we were all new fish <laughs> like we were all new into grade nine so the bullying stopped because everybody was brand new and, you know, whatever. And everything was going along swimmingly, speaking of fish, everything was going along great. I was on the swim team. I was got involved in the high school band and all that stuff. But in grade 12, I was taking a senior level credit course to be, get into university. The Ontario school system, when I was growing up, we went to grade 12. And then if you wanted to go to university, you took an extra year. It was called grade 13 or your Ontario academic credits. And those were only the marks that would count for university. So I took a OAC grade 13 credit of biology. And this might be the one I'm gonna drop anyways, because I had seven total, but I wanted to see what would play out in the, at the end. But I sat in class on the first day, second day of biology, and I was having some struggles. And I went to the teacher after school for help and he was writing and giving me notes to, you know, things to do for homework and so on and so forth. And he looked at me as I was writing and he stopped and he stopped me and he's like, Amy, you're left-handed. Yeah, so you'll never pass my class is what the teacher said. Yeah, I asked for a tutor. I asked for extra help. I asked for like someone in another grade, like, you know, an the grade 13 year to come and help me and uh his answer was no he was also the head of the science department so i felt like i had no one to go to to say i need help so that's why i want to reach the educators 
and remind them because some of them, many teachers are amazing. Let's just put that out there. Teachers are brilliant and they're doing the best they can right now in these crazy weird times called COVID. Mm -hmm. Yet there are the few, very, very few that a teacher may need reminding to check your bias at the door and to remember that the social and emotional health of them and their students is vital important right now. Mm, 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 mm. Wow. That is something. Okay, okay, okay. So, of course, that's why um, you started your business. Can you tell my, my viewers and listeners what the name of your business is, please? Sure. It's called Inch by Inch Empowerment. And it's a motto that I've lived out my life, like inch by inch and step by step dreams and goals will come true inch by inch and step by step you can grow like from a baby to a you know toddler child and so on and so forth and just yeah it's just a perfect name i feel for my business and it represents another part of my life that i share sometimes about uh, my birth story actually okay okay wow okay so what so inch by inch, they are ca more catered to the girl um, and what they're going through as far as bullying and different things like that. So, you know, if you could give me a story or some type of background as to um, what you've done already with inch by inch empowerment. Yeah. So I've been running inch by inch empowerment uh, for many years now. And where I find myself coming to a lot are the schools and working with the students in um, a workshop type of location or workshop scenario or uh, girl guides or dance studios and working with them on flattening the curve of bullying. Because that's another key phrase right now in the world, right? Is flatten the curve. Mm. So why not we flatten the curve of bullying in school? and working with the students on being kind, on being respectful, on knowing that hurt people hurt people. Yes. To have that self-respect, that self-empowerment of themselves, to know that they can go forward in their life and have that passion, that drive right. to do it. And I've noticed when I leave that sometimes it sticks and sometimes the the adults, the caring adults, if it's like a girl guide or, or, you know, church group or an educator, there's sometimes a disconnect or a missing link because sometimes it's not followed through with. Or especially the teachers are like, yeah, okay, we did the workshop. Okay, let's move on. Like, mm. let's go back to math and science. Right. So that's kind of what I do as well. And I've, as I said, I've noticed this missing link between when I've been there doing the workshop to okay, the educators are like, yep, that was a good workshop next. Mm. I, I think, you know, um, I don't know if this, this just came to me for any reason or anything like that, but you know how um, when you are more involved and you are being a, um, what's those, what's those people, volunteer, for the lack of a better term. And and because I've, I've seen this happen before where, you know, they, they were trying to get people to actually be more involved so that they understood. And so what they did was they had a one group be like the victim and the other group be, you know, the people that are going against the victims, you know? And then, like, each one had to, not to hit them, but to just say anything to them just to hurt their feelings and stuff like that. How do you feel when your feelings are being hurt? You're not even a kid. You're a grown-up. So now, what do you do? What do you say? Well, it's actually something I teach the nice. kids and it's called salt. 
and it stands for stop, ask, listen, talk. So stop what you're doing and make eye contact with the person. Ask a question. Why did you call me stupid? Or why do you think my shoes are ugly? Or, you know, whatever. Ask the question back. L is listen. Listen to the answer. And then talk is have a conversation, have a dialogue. For example, um, something I've used in the past in a workshop, uh, actually with all adults living with developmental disabilities. And we, we role played this, we practiced. And me as the one calling names, and I prefaced everything in the beginning, I'm like, we're gonna pretend, I'm not saying this to you to hurt your feelings. But I said, you know what? You walk funny, you're stupid. Mm -hmm. to one of the people in the room who I noticed when he came in had a, a physical um, mobility issue. And uh, the whole room took a breath. I'm like, right, exactly. Stop, take a breath. Now, what would you ask me back? What would you say to me? And the individual, he's like, well, why do you think I walk funny? And my response was, well, I don't know. You just look really dumb when you're doing it. Mm. And then talk, have a conversation. So his response to me was, you know, I live with cerebral palsy and I walk this way and I've been working on my skills to improve my walking. You know, he, he was in a wheelchair or something as a kid and now he's able to walk. So it's just having that open dialogue mm -hmm. and it works with any type of situation, not just bullying. It can work in conflict resolution actually really well. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's that's that is so interesting. And I, I think that is that is something that, you know, a lot of people do need to kind of take because I was bullied too, so I understand completely what you you, you were talking about, you know. And you know, you wanna be an advocate, but you never really know in what way to be able to do something like that, you know? And so you making this leap being inch by inch empowerment, you know, like I think that is something that it really should take off. It really should. Like it should be, um, do you do any maybe webinars or do you do any lives or do you, you know, have a counseling line or anything like that? So everything I do can be done virtually. Yes, mm -hmm. like person is best obviously, yet we can connect this way through the computer and I can still reach the kids because I've done that a few times. I've done it in to a group of girls in South Africa mm -hmm. that I taught a couple things and talked, you know, we did workshops a couple of times. And then also a group here, uh, well, they were across Canada, but mostly British Columbia and Alberta. And, um, we did a workshop about dream boards, actually in visions and dreams. And I led them through meditation. And then they were able to write out their, their dream and share it through video. Mm. So I do lots on Facebook as well. Mm -hmm. uh, in my personal page, Amy Hutton, or my business page, Inch by Inch, by Inch Empowerment. And, uh, or I'll do it on my personal wall and share it over to Inch by Inch Empowerment because I have more more friends on Facebook in on my personal wall than I do in my business page. So I share it that way. Um, yeah, it's, it's lovely to do and I like the interaction and I did a live Facebook live on my personal wall. When was it? It was before COVID, I think. And, uh, or right somewhere, I don't know when exactly, but the Alberta government announced that they were going to raise class sizes of school, raise wow. the, the class sizes. And I had a huge surge of energy. And, you know, I shared that in this live and there was lots of comments and lots of interaction. But the main thing, one of the main things I was sharing is you raise class sizes. Your attendance level is going to go down. Your rate of dropout is going to go down. Your test results are going to, you know, your rate of dropout is going to go up. Okay. 
your test results are going to go down, the rate of kids attempting suicide is going to go up. Yeah. yeah. Because the kids are not being seen or heard or valued in the classroom. So if you keep mm -hmm. the class sizes where they are or even <laughs> lower them, that would be a great thing. Mm -hmm. um, and teachers are engaging with the students and working with the students and wanting to lift them up and empower them, then you're going mm -hmm. to see higher test results and you're going to see better attendance and you're going to see lower levels or lower numbers of kids attempting suicide. Mm -hmm. That, wow. like that, that hurts my heart. Like to have kids feel that they don't, they're not being seen or not being valued or heard or, whatever in a classroom by a teacher, mm -hmm. that, that hurts. Yeah. No, I understand that, no. Uh, well, I, I will say this. If anything, that's when, if, if anything, um, the parents should really start to step in, you know, because, you know, when you don't talk to your child or you don't have someone that you trust talk to your child to give them another way of thinking of things. You know, um, I was, I guess I, I really, really do understand the whole bullying concept. I, I really didn't have anybody to talk to, but at the same time, you know, I was just like, I dropped out of school, you know, and I dropped back in after a while, but you know, <laughs> but at the same time, it just made me that much more like um, less likely to kind of really be a um, just, you know influential to to the mainstream, you know, just the society as a, as a whole. Um, and then you know you never know how they're going to take it because they can just be angry, and then they're just doing a lot more stuff. And you're sitting there like, well, why are they doing this and why are they doing that? But did you talk to them? Did you did you have the communication? Did you try? You know, a lot of the times children will talk to you. Now, don't don't pressure them. One, you know, they don't like that, you know. But at the same time, you really gotta gotta listen. You know, if you're listening, you know, first. Before, you know, before it happens, they're more inclined to tell you then as opposed to later on when they feel like they're alone. Because when they feel like they're alone, that's kind of like one of those deals like you got to break down every wall they got up. And it is that much harder to get to them, you know, yeah. different things like that. I, uh... What about advocacies? Do they have, you know, programs like that? Many teachers and many schools are saying, oh, we have zero tolerance or, oh, we have a strict policy around bullying and so on and so forth. And this, you know, to go on a different thread for just a second, like going into universities and the statements that I've heard from university people that, oh, we have a very strict policy around sexual harassment or, or sexual violence towards the, our students. And I'm like, both situations I'm like yeah no you don't because you know other other story for a different day about universities and such but like in high school and junior high or elementary it I've seen and heard of my friends who have children that is like have said I went to the principal I went to the guidance counselor I went to there sometimes they have like a liaison school officer related to the the police service and you know i've gone and asked for help and she's banged on doors until she finally got an answer and she's like this is my child who's in grade one i shouldn't be doing this like why are mm -hmm. teachers doing more right um so in that respect and then the other thing i was thinking uh, while we were discussing about home and i have something to share that your listeners may get their knickers in a knot, but go with me and take a breath on this. Mm -hmm. Bullying doesn't start in school. Bullying okay. starts in the home. So parents, I was asked recently a couple days ago on a different webinar or a different 
podcast, what can parents or grandparents look for if their child might be the actual one doing the bullying? And that's where I came up the, with, I said, the statement of bullying starts at home. So how are you as the adult interacting with your child? Are you mm -hmm. saying to your child, oh, you know, you're stupid? Yeah. Are you telling your child different things? You know, like, why is it taking so long for you to do your math homework type of a yeah. thing? And then the kids will internalize it and go, oh, well, that's how my parents are treating me. And then earlier, remember, I said that hurt people hurt people. Yeah. So then they're going to go and they're, oh, I'm going to target Johnny at school because he, for whatever reason, like, I don't know why the bullies decided to choose me as their target. Don't know. Um, that'd be a fun question, curiosity wise, if I were to ever interact with any of the bullies now from my, you know, my elementary school days, if right. they know why they did it. Um, yeah, so watch what you say at home. Yeah. Yes, there's the the stream or the the thought process about the violence on video games or the violence they see on TV. And yeah, partially okay, true. However, it's more about who they're interacting with in real life that helps them influence on what they're doing. Mm -hmm. True, true. Because if they see how um, somebody else responds to a situation that they're already in and they see a, a good outcome, that's never a good thing because you, you, you're you going off of a fictitious, you know, show or movie, yeah. what have you. And, and yeah, no, you can't do that. This is real life. Sorry, I told you. Yeah, it's but, real life, yeah. And the other thing too is thinking, and we we both know this to be true also, that sometimes the home is actually not their safe space. Exactly. So I do know. we can create and facilitate safe spaces at schools for girls to come to and say, hey, I was just attacked in the girls' locker room. Or, hey, at home, my dad really yells at my mom or worse. Mm -hmm. So to have resources available for our girl students to get support and then facilitating in with that would actually be peer support leaders. So doing more leadership training with a girl in grade 12, for example, on how she can support a girl in grade nine who's just come into the school and into this resource, this safe space and say, hey, I need some help. Yeah. And it takes the le the burden or the not burden it lessens the workload of the teacher mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. one of the principles that I'm designing uh, for educators on the four principles of creating and facilitating safe spaces in schools one of them is turning it to be more student led than teacher led and then the teacher would take a back seat and let the student who's come in for the help and the peer support student do more of the driving of the conversation and so on and so forth. There you go. Because I think more like student to student kind of thing, it's like you, you get that bond going and then you don't feel so alone when you're going through stuff like that. So that's that's an awesome, awesome thing. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's good, girl, that's good. Yeah. Oh, she's doing it. Yeah. That's amazing. So where do you see your, your um, or want to see um, Inch by Inch Empowerment going? I would love to see safe spaces in all schools across Canada and then in the United States and around the world. And starting in the, the junior high, senior high level. And then as that gets, keeps going to branch into universities. Like I was lucky in my university that we had a women's center. And I know the University of Calgary here where I live, they also have a women's center. But my coach told me recent, this year, she told me, she's like, Amy, do you know that not every university campus in Canada has a women's center? Mm. And I was like, wow. I thought everyone did because mm. 
It should be. But I'm going to start. I'm choosing to start with that junior high age and senior high age. That's where my bullying happened was between grades three and grade eight. Hmm. And then going bigger picture, even uh, I mentioned this yesterday on the, another podcast, um, a like big, hairy, scary, big, awesome goal is actually to be traveling when we can travel again and travel to Geneva, Switzerland and speak Ooh. at the United Nations about yes. this topic. And then meeting with other um, state or national, you know, government level of province or state or even country and mm -hmm. having the conversation. And then, you know, meeting with some educators in those countries and working with them on how can we facilitate a safe space in your school for your girl around the right. world. Mm. Yes. Get it, girl. Yes, do that. I want pictures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want pictures. That's going to be absolutely phenomenal because I, I believe that just that alone could actually reach the world. You know, to reach the world just to give, you know. You know, I mean, just girls, sometimes boys are just as bad off, you know, um, I'm not, I'm not going to say like marriage or anything like that, but okay. <laughs> you yeah. Know? Like, yeah, but, when I, yeah. When I've done workshops in schools, it's been for both boys and girls because oh, it's the, the variety of the school yet mm -hmm. my target is that junior high, senior high, young female students because I'm a girl and I identify as female. So I know that about me and who I am and I'm not a boy. I don't mm -hmm. identify as male. So mm -hmm. I know boys and men and, and so on, the, they have struggles as well. I'm not denying that at all. Mm -hmm. Yet I focus on what I know. And I right. do have a couple of individuals that I could refer to if they want something for their sons. Right. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Wow. That is absolutely amazing. Amy. Gee, you are like superwoman and stuff. That is awesome. <laughs> okay. So you got to tell them how to, how they can reach you, dear heart. Yes. Yes. I'm on LinkedIn. If you're a professional business person or educator or principal or administration for a school, please go to LinkedIn to find me. It's just Amy Hutton, as it's spelled on the screen below. And uh, I would love to connect with educators around the world and have discussions about like, let's talk about the social and emotional health of your staff and your students. Mm -hmm. I'm on Facebook. As I said earlier, Inch by Inch Empowerment is the Facebook page name. I have a group that I'm slowly building called Inch by Inch Empowerment Leaders, and that's for a variety of three different types of people. It's for that young girl who is in Facebook, who has permission from the guardian or the parent to be in Facebook, and they can come in there if they are a survivor or are being bullied to make connection. It's also for the parent or the caring adult that can come in and connect with others who have been through bullying or need support. And then it's also for any educators who want resources <laughs> and, tools and and things like that. So that one's Inch by Inch Empowerment Leaders is the group. Right. Okay. All righty. And this is her website as well, Inch by Inch Empowerment.com. That's that www yep. on that other side. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's it. You gotta get a hold of her. You gotta see what she's got coming up. Y'all need hey, if y'all could support her, I mean it's going to be amazing and, and everybody can be empowered and loved all at the same time and we can all unite. You know, I think that would be such a wonderful thing to unite us, you know, to understand that it's, it doesn't always have to be hard. And then, you know, there's someone else that's out there that has 
gone through it and not just gone through it. I mean, they survived it. So, you know, we definitely want to kudos, girly. Kudos. That's all I can say. Kudos. I appreciate you definitely. So if there's anything you would like my Mayan tribe to know, dear heart, the floor is yours. Oh, there's always things I like to say. Um, <laughs> yet, you know, if there's anyone watching who has a child who's being bullied right now, they're not alone. There's people who want to help the child and help you as the parent. And, you know, I that's not fully my expertise. I'm working more with the educators, yet I know there's people out there that will work with the parents. Nice. If you're an educator and you're really struggling, because I had a teacher, or not a teacher, I had a, someone say to me in Facebook land that, oh, I bet the teachers are really happy that they're doing all the online learning or distance learning through the computer right now because of COVID, because the bullying has stopped. And I'm like, no, I'm really sorry, you're wrong. I read a stat earlier and it's that 35% of teenage girls have experienced cyber harassment or bullying. And it's on the rise, I can guarantee that. And the other yeah. thing I've heard is that girls age 11 to 15 are attempting to commit to die by suicide or they are i don't want to say the word successful but it's they actually did die by suicide and that mm -hmm. number rate is is high the other thing i want to say is and this is a bit of a different topic yet i feel it needs to be said that if you are a member or you identify as someone who's a part of the LGBTQ plus community, know that I see you and that you're not alone. And there's resources there as well for both kids and adults. Another part of my story we didn't get into is that I came out of the closet two years ago when I realized who I was two years ago. Hmm. So that whole story of, of that realization. So that's another part of what I've worked into with inch by inch empowerment is mm -hmm. why girls need safe spaces at school is so they can be themselves and come and say, hey, I'm struggling with my sexuality or I'm struggling to, who am I at my core? And mm -hmm. that's another thing I would like to say to your listeners and just thank you and, you know, one thing I always like to say is, well, a couple, a couple of quotes are coming to mind, is why fit in when you're born to stand out and be brave, be brave, be bold, and be yourself. Mm, I love that. Yes. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Woo! Okay. All right. You guys. <laughs> yeah. Huh, I'm trying, I'm trying to hold my composure, y'all. Y'all know how I am. I'm all over the place. I'm trying to just be like, you know what? I wish somebody would. You're going to be bullying my friend. Oh, no, you did not. I'm going to have everything to say about it. But you know what? It's, it's sad. It's sad, you know, because... Um, Nobody really knows what to do. Not even the bullies know what to do. You know, they're doing their thing. Like you said, you know, hurt people hurt people. You know, they, they're they getting bullied to some extent. So they don't know what to do. So they're just lashing out at someone else. So it's, it's sad that, that, has to, that it's happening and that we can't find a better way to have them exert their frustrations and energies on something else heck go play basketball play football do something you know something proactive you know to get all that hostility out of you and different things like that and i think um i think what you're doing is an excellent thing it really is and i only i can't wait till you start traveling around the world so when you when you come to south carolina right um <laughs> That's where you <laughs> <laughs> Oh 
Oh my goodness. But I appreciate your time, your effort, and your energies, dear heart. And and thank you so much. Thank you to my Maya tribe. I'm telling you, I love you guys so much because I do I do these these talks because if you are not happy with your present situation, if you don't like your job, find something that gives you a sense of dignity, something that you can do, not just for yourself, but for other people. I, I know there's so many more people that are out here doing stuff because of COVID, but I think in, in all retrospects, if you look at it as a blessing, it can be. It can be because now this gives you the time and the opportunity to get yourself ready to hit the ground running when this thing is over. So then you'll be all the more prepared for what it is that you're gonna do. Oh, for sir. sure. Can I, add <laughs> Can I add something on that, please? Oh, definitely. So I did a post in the Uncommon Women International chapters the other day, and um, it was about gratitude. And I have heard time and time again, since probably you know April, March, or April, May, that oh 2020 is like can is, is bad or 2020 is not good or I can't wait for 2020 to be over and I I hate how 2020 is working out and la 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 stop it like where's the stop it like is there a stop it button like seriously people stop it <laughs> there's a there's, I'll have to find it and send it to you later Maya there's a, a funny little uh, clip of uh, it's a comedian and he literally is like stop it he's talking to you <laughs> and you know what are you grateful for right now what has been that little little thing you can be grateful for and hang on to that's happened for you in 2020 i've had so many amazing opportunities um in 2020 that i'm just grateful and over the moon happy for you know for example last week um, I was on Global News. It's a local radio uh, TV station here. I was on uh, Global News about a kind kit initiative that I'm spearheading here in Calgary. And I was on another TV radio, no, TV news today. And then I, I think it aired at some point, like in the next two hours, it's going to air uh, on the news. So like, what are things that have happened for you that you can be grateful for for 2020 and write a list? Mm. Yes. yes, and that list is going to be so long. I, I promise you it's going to be long. Y'all got to, because I mean, think about it. You got up, you are able to walk, you're able to see, you're able to speak. I mean, you, you're able to taste, touch, feel. Like, I, I mean, that's just, just you know, the, the, the senses. You know, you, you didn't take on all the other things that are so around you. You got a roof over your head, clothes on your back, food on the table. Be grateful. Be grateful because, you know, there's a lot of people that don't have those things and they're in this crisis with us. Yes. Yeah. And also, if you're watching this, you have internet. You have either a tablet or a phone or a computer that you can watch this on. Mm-hmm. Yes. See, gratefulness is all around the things that we should definitely be grateful for. Don't take nothing for granted because don't. I'm just telling you because there's someone else that would, would kill to have what you have access to, you know? So thank you so much, you guys. I appreciate you. Look, if you want to be on the show, go ahead and hit me up i'm on one lady maya at gmail.com and so let me just tell you this just give me give me what you do tell me how you you've improved someone else's life tell me what it is that makes you you thank you so much for joining me lady maya and living your best life i will talk to you guys later Bye, everyone.